Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the fifth and final episode of Ashfall in Trouble. Uh, this is part one, and we are Hacked in the Dark, a network of Forge in the Dark players and designers. Um, I'll pass it off to Jacob. Okay. Yeah, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the last episode, as uh, Travis said. So, um, Ashfall in Trouble is a game in which you are a biker gang in a uh, climate apocalypse fighting against other gangs and corporations. So this gang are the Hellhounds. In a shortened version, where the threat of the corporation increases uh, each session instead of slowly accruing over time. So this is going to be the climactic conclusion where the corporations uh, give it their all, basically. So uh, let's introduce the people who are going to do their best to survive in the face of that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ian, he, him, and I'm playing Doc, the architect. Hi, I'm Jared, he, him, and I'm playing Seth, the confidant. Uh, and I'm Travis, uh, anything's good, and I am playing Anthony Ridges. The Greaser. And I'm Danielle, I used to hear their pronouns, and I am playing Flaky Kiki Gathan, the Breaker. Awesome. So, uh, last session, there was a, uh, a conversation, a, a deal made with the Bottom Feeders, a pirate-themed biker gang, uh, aboard a battleship that they had... Jesus, cat! <laughs> I swear to God! <laughs> ...that they had commandeered. Um, uh, long story short, you managed to get their help uh, form a, a loose alliance, so you both distrust each other. Uh, knowing that uh, cresting the horizon, uh, a horde of corporation ships are approaching Tide Home, uh, okay. ex corporate compound, factory compound, uh, is now inhabited by innocents and protected by the Condors, uh, uh, another rival gang. So we're entering some downtime as you know that this is coming. It will be happening any day now. So time is short. Uh, mechanically, no difference, but <laughs> the downtime period might be a short time in world. So does anyone know what they want to do first? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple things I want to do. Go for uh, it. So I'm going to train Steel and Playbook, uh, which will max out both of those gauges. Okay. And uh, so I think what that looks like is Doc yeah. just, you know, furiously studying and optimizing, getting everything ready. Definitely okay. working on a bigger diorama for this battle. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, what, what special ability are you getting? I'm picking up Codebreaker. I know how to advance, access advanced cybertech digitally. Cool. So, oh shoot! Yeah. All right. So, I should be um, able to hack the corporate tech now. Yeah. Uh, for background for the audience, normally if uh, you're faced with a corporate computer, uh, the only way to get into it would be with an X. So <laughs> now you know some code. I like to imagine um, that Doc is just taking every diorama he made previously and setting it up inside of a room. <laughs> Laying out the whole the whole town diorama by diorama. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a bigger headquarters now, right? Now that we're tier four. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure if, we can uh, find a space for that. Yep. Yeah. You've got well. I mean, one of your cohorts is a construction group, so yeah, they just built you a extra large room for it. And then I'll pay <laughs> a, a script to inhabit my haunt too. Okay. Uh, remind me what your haunt is. <laughs> the hospital. The hospital. Uh, apparently, things are still stressful there. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone's on edge. Um, there are uh, plenty of wounded who are need tending, and it's not uh, a relaxing <laughs> jaunt to the hospital like you might imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else know what they want to do? I at least know for, for my initial two actions. Uh, first off, I'd like to inhabit our extra haunt, our... Uh... Uh, the town hall, mm -hmm. kind of, and get everyone riled up and make sure we have some people 
willing to, to, to hold guns and do stuff or whatever we might need him to do in this next score. So that's going to be two dice minus the lowest, or minus the highest. So that is one stress relief. Okay. Trying times. Better than nothing, yeah, right. Better than nothing, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then for that second one, uh, yeah, Seth's going to go get a haircut. Uh, he's going to make sure he looks really, really good for this last one. Uh, haircut, teeth whitens, you know, really making sure everything is on point. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to go inhabit his actual haunt as well. Okay. And that goes a little bit better. That's better, yep. Yeah, so five total stress down. That's not bad. Not yeah. bad. So, yeah, uh, in the town hall, everyone... Uh, it's more packed than usual. Uh, everyone who's in the town basically seems to have crammed in. And they are all asking what your plans are and what you're going to do. And uh, what you hope to accomplish. Knowing that the corp... And, and, like, they don't... Some of them don't believe that corporations are coming and that kind of thing and saying, like... Uh, what, like... Is, is Are the stories true? And that kind of thing. And yeah, Seth's, Seth's going to deliver it straight. The stories are true, you know. Uh, the end is coming, and you need to prepare. Uh, not to, to lean too heavily into the song. Yep. Uh, but yeah, no, he, he's. this is what's happening. Hey, wait on, on further instructions if you want to actually be able to fight back a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> little I bit. think he, he, he doesn't necessarily... I think the, the softness in him doesn't overplay the hope. It's more of get angry because there's nothing else we can do about it so let's at least just go down swinging that's that's kind of more what he's he's okay. amping up right now all right <laughs> and it's probably Not a part, very... of, part of why you didn't get much stress relief because that doesn't uh <laughs> relieve their stresses fair reasonable yeah all right who else wants to go uh, well, Anthony has plenty of things to do, um, mm -hmm. as per usual. Um, mm -hmm. So I developed, uh, with the help of Martin last time, mm -hmm. um, the rocket hover engine or whatever we needed to yep. make a bike fly. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think uh, Anthony is going to try to like retrofit it or get it attached to this uh, wild mascot that we've made. Um, with three heads. Um, hopefully, because uh, I mean they've had the Hilo leva levicopters. Levicopters, yeah. Um, in the past, and eh, I mean maybe a metal cat monster can't really take down a helicopter, but mm -hmm. uh, it probably just freak somebody out or land on the windshield. Maybe I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I was gonna try to uh throw as much weight at that as I need to. Um, I do have sure. two ticks for free. Yep. Um, so, to turn this monster, this robot monster, into uh, your vehicle, um, with and also install a mod. So I think mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll wrap that all up into a six wheel. I think a six uh, spoke wheel. Sure. <clears throat> um, oh, looking at the wrong person. Uh, so the first one, I'll get a rig roll, um, and I have plus one to the result level from one of my abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and Anthony still is not nearly as good as Martin, but he's also fine with that. Sure. Uh, you could have Martin help you, though, for an extra die. Um, sure. Let's roll one more. Yeah. He's not helpful. Yeah, so, <laughs> plus one result, so it's a six. Yeah. Uh, that would be three. three. Plus, uh, your ability gives you two. At the beginning yeah, of downtime. Yeah, correct. So, yep. You're at five out of six. Um, and that's actually only one action for me so far. Um, uh-huh. So I'll take the 
second action as trying to rig that. Um, okay. I really can't fail. Um, so I'll roll yeah, anyways. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't fail. Yeah. So, Just to see if I can uh, crit. No, that's fine because when you are installing a mod, um, its quality is equal to your tier plus or minus depending on what you roll. And if you roll higher, then it will be a like it will have an extra effect, basically. Sure, superior. So, right. So that uh, since you get plus to the result is a six, which means it's going to be uh, and you just got to tier four. It's going to be a corporate level, so tier five uh, level flying thing. Sure. Flying monster. Um. I mean, I think that's probably reasonable just on the basis of uh, it already was corporate. Um, yeah, sure. And you've got the, like, levitating components from the levicopter you downed. So. Um, yeah, I, I think you probably see, there's probably a scene, like an extended, mm -hmm. almost like montage probably, with, like, um, Anthony working in the workshop. Um, and there's probably, like, uh, different like cuts of him like grabbing tools or like furiously working on stuff and from the last session my bike had been uh, basically destroyed uh, by going into the ocean or uh, nearby yeah. tributary right. um, and I probably recovered it even still um, okay and I think from the viewer's perspective it maybe looks like Anthony's like trying to get his bike back in working order. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think there's like a, a cut eventually where like one of the other gang members uh, like walks into the workshop or something and you like the camera pans or something and you see Anthony's bike like still severely damaged uh, like in a corner or something. And uh, maybe the gang, other gang members a little bit confused about that before looking over uh, and seeing like a seat on the back of the cat now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the cat, as a reminder to the audience as well, has a panther head, a lion head, and a dragon head. Very important. Mm -hmm. Lions in the center, though. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most powerful. Yeah, and the lion mane is blades. Yeah. It's a very dangerous bike to ride. Yes, right. Uh, if you try to, if you're gonna fall and you have to grab onto something, be careful what you grab onto. But uh, it has handlebars because of your special ability. Yeah, of course. I, I, I think that's a, one of the other things or part of the scene. Like somebody probably sees my bike still wrecked. They're confused by it, and then they like look over to Anthony. And before you see the Cerberus souped up, mm -hmm. you see Anthony like, and this might even be Seth because Seth's seeing Anthony questioning whether or not he wants to uh, leave this robot potentially yep. active. Um, and I think the scene, like, has Anthony destroying the controller. Um, mm. And maybe it's, like, a little bit shocking at first uh, before you look over and you see that, like, it's been made, like, manual control. Like, you just now have to be in contact it. with it yeah, yeah, right. to control it. Awesome. Um, which means also that, uh, theoretically, Doc, with his new hacking <laughs> ability, could also control it. Yeah. Don't tell Anthony. Yeah. Um, I want to jump back real quick to Seth, because I forgot something. Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. So, uh, first of all, uh, we've been talking about a couple of crew upgrades, and one has not yet been settled on, to my knowledge. But also, uh, you've got two last sessions. So one that you, the one that you knew you were getting, yep, uh, is uh, big stick. So you have always have authority to intervene um, when two or more factions are engaged with each other. You gain increased effect to end the conflict. So in the um, in the town hall, when you're giving a speech at the end, the mayor comes up to you and gives you a badge. Uh, <laughs> and it's a big old-fashioned sheriff's badge. Uh, pins it right on your leather jacket. Uh, and it's got like a like bloody streak across it. Uh, 
and the sheriff says, "Sorry, I didn't get to clean it up from the last uh, last sheriff uh, in or the enforcer uh, enforcer Zechariah stepped down. Uh, let you take over." Uh, much appreciated. And so he'll, he'll wipe it off delicately as best as he can with a handkerchief or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, on the back you can see like it's been signed by a bunch of names you recognize from various other uh, gangs. So uh, this is your emblem of kind of authority to some extent. Um, they had in some time before this campaign began uh had an agreement not to like sack the town or something like that and uh you are now the one who is in charge of protecting it great that's that's <laughs> absolutely fantastic i mm -hmm. i wholeheartedly accept this responsibility kiki no <laughs> <laughs> um but yes, Kiki, so what do you want to do? Uh, I would like to inhabit my haunt first. Mm -hmm. So that's the animal shelter. Yep. Uh, still rolling 2d6 and taking the lowest, so. Okay. Four. That's not bad. Uh, that takes me down to four. Uh, I'll leave it. It's more exciting that way. Okay. Um, yeah, so the animals don't know what's going on, uh, but see that people are nervous, so they appreciate having someone to come in and pet them and take care mm -hmm, of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to train, uh, but before I do, I want to have a scene with Anthony, uh, because I did promise Seth that I would talk to him. <laughs> sure. Uh, so Kiki comes and finds you while you're working on the um, the Cerberus. Sure. Uh, and she kind of leans up against the tool bench and doesn't really say anything. She just watches you work for a minute. Um, and then when you turn around, she's just there. Uh, <laughs> which is only like a, a little ninja. frightening. Yeah. Um, and, uh, she uh, kind of inclines her head at you, uh, and says, um, oh, we still got to deal with K. Pause that. Oh. <laughs> you said that to me? No. <laughs> I know. We should have never let it go. Walks in, pauses, shit. Just kidding. Never mind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We've got other things to deal with. Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> nah. Time is fake during downtime. Uh, All right. And Kiki says, um, so. I think I think she she demurs first and just says, "So you think uh, that'll be a good steed?" Uh, I think Anthony's probably like wipes his brow or something. He's probably been working on it for like quite some time, uh, and kind of just shrugs. He's like, "Well, I've never quite gone up in the air on well anything." quite yet, but uh, I think I can handle it. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can handle it. <laughs> uh, as long as there's no lightning around. <laughs> uh, she kind of like pats your shoulder um, and says, uh, so, um, Seth and I have been talking, uh, about what this all might look like after. 
Like the town? Yeah, the town and the gang. I think uh, you might share some of my trepidations about our fearless leader. Uh, I think Anthony probably wouldn't really say anything about it. Uh, maybe just kind of look at you for a second. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call him fearless, but... What, uh, what exactly have you guys been talking about? Uh... Uh, Jared, remind me what um, what piece of information Seth shared with Kiki. Um, do you remember what what was it? Because there's a couple like like couple. Was it the the kelp research stuff or the? Uh... Uh, it might have been the kelp research stuff. I know we talked about. Um, how buddy buddy uh doc seemed about yeah things. i think because because seth was mainly sharing that that yeah the corporation's for sure moving in they left research into in the tide home mm -hmm. uh and basically he saw or at least he sees what he thinks doc is doing um which is play the corporation try and get the best of both worlds and he, he's trying to play chess with someone who owns the board and all the pieces he's he's gonna lose eventually right, right. Um, thank you so that was i think the the yeah just yeah thank you um mm -hmm. and kiki says uh well mostly we've been talking about what we're thinking doc is thinking uh, cause he sure shit isn't running into battle like you or I, but he is playing a very dangerous game, I think. And I'm worried he's being careless. Well, I can tell you that I'm certainly not going to just throw myself into a position that I don't think I can get out of, at the very least. Uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, I don't do terribly much thinking about what they're thinking about. Uh, it's nice to have somebody making the plans and they haven't always been the ones that I might have wanted to make but I mean the town's looking relatively good at the moment they're going to stomp real hard because they can't afford to do anything else. And I think we're going to put up a good fight. But I have a go bag packed. Because I'm not sure that someone won't try to pull the rug out from under us in the middle of it. I think Anthony might kind of like glance at your large metal arm uh, <laughs> a little suspiciously uh, and maybe glance back at the Cerberus that he's been working on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like we've all taken our share of uh, what we can from them and I get that it the corporations aren't going to just back off uh, 
But I don't think, I mean, if it's not this town, if it's not the next town, I mean, between running from them or at least trying to keep somewhere safe, uh, I think we're doing pretty okay here. Uh, and I'd definitely rather try that than just leave. Uh, Kiki arches an eyebrow. Well, I can't let you take all the glory, you know that. We'll see. I'll definitely <laughs> be counting. A <laughs> uh, friendly bet wager, then. Hopefully I don't have to count too high, though. <laughs> Levicopters aren't worth any more than everything else, are they? <sighs> <laughs> now you count the people in the Levicopter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good. Nice. Uh, great. Love it. Uh, okay. Uh, the other thing that Kiki's gonna do is she's gonna go train with the stilettos. Mm, nice. Um, now can I train anything I want, or do I have to train steel? Um, you have 2 XP if you train steel. Yes. Uh, train you can train anything you want. Um, they're especially good at steel, but, like, they can train you to, like, avoid ambush or, you know, stand your ground or whatever for the others. Yeah, I'm thinking resolve. Okay. Um, and I'll just spend cred whatever I need to just level up in that. Okay. Um, I just, I only need two XP, so. Okay, sure. You take a point in command. Yeah. So, um, they know, obviously, what's going on, and, uh, they're also deep in training themselves. So they welcome you and show you some, uh, tips and tricks. <laughs> basically um, and uh, you get a sense for of like the types of things that they're training uh, and where they're uh, like where they see their position is in the oncoming fight so the, a lot of them are doing like ambush practice and that kind of thing are they involved they're not they're not in soggy bottom right they're not in Saggy Bottom, no, but they're in, like, they're near enough by that it's gonna trickle out to them. So they're in the, they're like, Bloodlands area, yeah. Okay. Did they sign the, uh, Sheriff's Patch? Yes. They're, they're part of our region. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I'm gonna, uh, drop by Kiki's room and ting ting. Uh, you wanna update that arm before the big battle? We've got a lot of new tech I can stick in there. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see, well, the thing is that if she's considering having to run away and start over if this goes really, really, really south, then she doesn't want to have super advanced tech it's harder to maintain, yeah. To maintain. Like, a robot arm is one thing, but, like, a robot arm that also does X, Y, and Z is a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think she uh, kind of dodges the question a little bit. Um, like, oh, you know, I'm still getting used to this one. Uh, and uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to overpower them too much, you know. It's uh... <laughs> you want it to be a challenge. Yeah. It's got way more bells and whistles. You sure? Do I really seem like a bells and whistles kind of <laughs> gal to you? <laughs> Your loss. Doc walks <laughs> away and his it, arm but... whistles. <laughs> 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 Speaking of updated arms, I have bunches of ideas. No. Uh, ah, we got at least one more free quality level over your last one. Yeah? Could we make it dispense uh, some sort of knockout or hallucinatory gas? 
I'd imagine so. I've already got that blueprint for my arm. So, strapping it yeah, in. Yeah, that would be... You've got, like, an injection blueprint for yours, so that would be, like, a... Uh... I guess I could see that being like an upgrade on that. So like a, if you can get a higher tier or higher quality for that. So I'll for sure pay the, the script to have that done. Sure, let's give it a shot. And uh, can I get help from our expert tech person? Sure. He's now higher quality than I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's not, um, not really a surgeon, but it's close enough. Um, well, so actually, no, I mean, he is like a, more of a technician than a surgeon. So I'm not sure if his higher quality would apply. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about the, um, the rest of the, the crew? Cause they're all, the, the cohort are yeah, also the, all eggheads. The eggheads, for. uh, the eggheads would be able to, they're quality for, yeah. So you can use them. Okay. So I get I get some of the one of one of the uh, the biker or one of the the bikers slash construction workers to come in and help right. out. Yeah, so I think by now they've. Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. Oh, Ooh. it's so much better. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so that's tier, tier plus, plus the workshop makes it corp level. And then the crit on top of that. Yeah, that's tier plus two. So, um, two levels higher than corp tier seven. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yes, your arm is basically a knockout bomb if you if you need it. Uh, you will probably be affected. I think like um, it's, it's it's a if you a, use it in bomb uh, mode. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I think I think part of the improved quality is the ability to scale it up or down as you need. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, the best you could be. Futuristic alien tech at this point, like. <laughs> yeah, yep. Right. So maybe you. Um, I think maybe why it's so good is that uh, some of the uh, construction crew have been making trips to Tide Home to like friends and family there. And there's a like corporate lab underneath. So they've been taking like corporate, like experimental Prototype. corporate chemicals and stuff from there. Awesome. Yeah. That doesn't sound concerning at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this is, there's no way this could backfire. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. The last so thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, as as you're leaving the um the the hospital slash lab setup, I'm gonna I'm gonna like sort of LB and be like, hey, go show Kiki. She won't update her arm. <laughs> Make her jealous. <laughs> Kiki, look what you can do. Knockout gas. <laughs> Kiki can kind of already do that, really. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um. Actually, uh, what I was, this is more posed to the group in general, is do you think it'd be worth it to, to spend the script for, like, just kind of an acquire asset role to see, I don't know if we can get the carrion or, or, um, carry, oh, what's the other group? Carrion or, or condors? condors? Condors, wow. Um, basically just to see, like, for sure get their backing on our side. Basically do that whole make relations, make sure we have backup from whatever groups. Yeah. So the group that's oh. do, that occupies Tide Home is probably going to want to fight on our side anyway. But the group that is trying to invade Tide Home, that would probably make sense. Yeah. I don't remember which is which. Yeah, so Condors, Condors defending. Are in, yeah, the Condors are in Tide Home. The Carrion would like Tide Home. You have a positive relationship with the Carrion and a negative with the Condors. Uh, something I think we talked about between sessions, uh, just to remind you as well. Uh, two things. One, um, I think we talked about also just like a long-term project to build up defenses, kind mm -hmm. of. Yep. Um, and also, you have a slight with serrated K, so if you uh, want her to still be around and help in some way, you're going to have to do something with that, too. Yeah, I was like, oh, I need to deal with that, and then promptly forgot. Yeah. <laughs> So you want to do serrated K first, or? 
Whichever. Uh, cause then the, the other idea is then, yeah, building up defenses, um, I think, uh, yeah, s quick scene of Seth actually kind of playing with the badge and, and looking at his to-go bag, cause he was kind of already debating on taking off before all this. Mm -hmm. And then kind of giving a grunt and, and of dis displeasure and basically helping organize people in the town, figure out who, who can do what, uh, waving some of that authority around. So basically, uh, starting a long-term project of you know preparing town defenses. Uh... Okay. So, are you preparing town defenses for Soggy Bottom Creek or for Titan? I think Soggy Bottom Creek, okay. just because he he's a little bit more concerned with them in the end. All right. So, I will let you pick the size of the wheel. So, like the bigger the wheel, the more defenses. What kind Let's of role bigger. is contributing to it, I think, is... That's part of it, yeah. Could easily see Commander Rig helping out. Mm -hmm. Rig would be a little too direct. Because um, I don't think For he's... Seth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit manual labor. Command, I could see... I, I would love if I could somehow argue for Sway. Uh... Yeah, so, like... You can sway perhaps another gang or something to come help. There we go. Okay, that's actually a good idea. So, I think then, who who would be good at building then? I guess uh, would it be I guess Carrion or construction Car crew? Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, this would be to help your construction crew, right? So, uh, the bottom feeders gave you access to their driftwood lumber yard. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. And then the, you there. I can introduce another gang. So let's see. Uh, the just flipping through the gang list, to see who would be most appropriate. The builders. Yeah, it, it's not an explicit like we build things gang. <laughs> <laughs> But um, perhaps the carapace, uh, who are academics, they're kind of exiled professors and such. Um, and there might be like some engineering professors amongst them, who like civil engineering, who can help direct things. Yeah, that actually seems like a good group to, to get a hold of. And they, they haven't had a chance to, to really be introduced yet. So mm -hmm. I think Seth will basically yeah go in and try and contact some of them, get them to kind of pop into town, convince them it's in their best interest as well. Um, I'm going to say let's go big for a 6 o'clock. Nice. I mean, 8 o'clock, I don't think I'll have a chance to fill up. So 6 seems big, but not too big. Oh, so 6, you said? Oh, yeah, sorry, 6. Uh, 8, I don't think I'll be able to fill Okay, six. I mean, you got the rest of us to help. Oh, do we want to go for eight? Just, just. I mean, if we still got script to burn, why not? Yeah, All right. I've got two. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, then, then the crew not? still has four. Okay, yeah, let's go for eight. Sorry, we're going okay. back and forth. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, right. Twelve o'clock. Um. Did I spell defensively? Defense is right. There we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you want to sway to bring in the carapace. Yes. So, let me clear. There it is. All right. Uh, yeah, let's just go for a straight roll. Okay. And that is a six. Nice. All right. So... You get plus one result level in crafting large wooden structures from your turf. So um, basically, you have all the raw materials you need, and you can pick out the best of it. And so with a six, that's a crit, um, which I believe is five uh, mm -hmm. spokes. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So that was uh, basically, yeah, you the um, one of the like head carapace uh, um, engineers. I don't know. Yeah, engineers basically uh, is like willing to come over and help and and 
they're a bit out of the loop about what's been happening, but uh, they uh, they maybe you promised them. Real. Maybe you promised them like some tech or something like that. They can of... totally have whatever tech you know they want. Uh, that's yeah. all future problems. Right now, is the building up <laughs> defenses problem. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're eager to get into that. So, Sounds good. Yeah, construction is moving along. Was there anyone else we slighted other than uh, not last K? time? Okay, give some grudges from sites that didn't get uh, ah addressed, true. But... They're minor. Yeah, so, uh... yeah. At least one of them died. So. <laughs> oh. Ghost Rider. <laughs> Ghost Rider, you threw over the edge of the ship. Yeah. Well, I stabbed what? him and then threw him over oh, the Oh, right, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I forgot. <laughs> then, uh, I think, if unless someone else has a super good idea, I, like, someone else can take over, so I think. Um, the other one is, is either A, trying to finish up this clock, or B, starting to figure out some way to... I don't know, prep an ambush type site along the road or something like that. I don't know. Something that could help us in the score. Um, I mean, if, uh, if defenses start getting made, uh, I'm sure Anthony would make time to go help out with that uh, in a bit more of a direct way. Um, I was just waiting for Doc to uh, tell me what the plan was so we could do the defenses. But, uh, yeah, we have uh, defenses going. I will chip in. We can uh, jump ahead to talking about what the plan is and then come back and finish whatever other downtimes we want, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to set the scene as far as what we know about the attack? Sure. So... Um... A number of ships are planning on coming to Tide Home uh, and um, offloading some like ground forces to surround it and capture it. Uh, and then presumably seeing uh, consider it, see how much of the resistance they've seen so far. Um, they have figured that a lot of it is coming from Soggy Bottom Creek, so they might be, you expect at least, that they'll be using that momentum to and all those mobilized forces to come there as well. Okay. So, uh, I guess I'm going to, we can throw out some plans out of character and then in character, you know, we'll sure. come okay. up with something. Um, so the, the first thing I think of is we let them let them pull up, let them unload, and then when the troops are actually in the town, we surround them and trap them in the town while we take the relatively defenseless ships. Um, and then from there we've got, you know, their artillery, and we've got them surrounded. I mean, yeah, that's that's actually not a bad idea of, of sneaking basically onto the ships as soon as they leave and, and having that to our benefit. That being said, this is a town of, of you know, civilians and people. Uh, so we would just, you know, be letting the, the armed corporate soldiers kind of run rampant in the town in the meantime. Yeah. And that's something <laughs> I, that's something I think we'll, we'll have a great discussion of in character. But I'm just saying, is yes. that a fine plan to go for it? Yeah, or yeah. talk to propose? Oh, for sure. For sure. Okay. So I, I, I lay out my diorama of Tide Home, which has taken me hours to complete. Mm -hmm. Um and I've got the little the little battleships and transport laid out, and uh, I'm describing that how they're planning to come in, unload. I move the little troops into uh, into Tide Home, and then I say, and there we wait, and we wait as they move into the city, and then us and our allied gangs move out, surround the town, cut them off from their ships, and then we take over the ships. That serves two purposes. One, it means we control all of their artillery. So instead of fighting under enemy fire, we're fighting under friendly fire, which is slightly better. But more importantly, uh, if we can take and hold all these corporate ships, it means that we'll be able to defend ourselves from the sea next time this happens. 
If they come after Soggy Bottom Creek in the future, we can meet them on the open ocean and not uh, put any of our townsfolk at risk. Yeah, but those are still town folk at risk, and I'm pretty sure the uh, condors have whatever sort of deal to keep them safe, and they're not going to be too happy if we just let a bunch of corpos run rampant in the streets. I mean, you're using let there pretty generously. They're in charge of defending their turf. I'm assuming that they fail, and then we can rush in and rescue them. But we don't have any kind of agreement to come in and protect them from their own weakness. If the, thing I mean, is if, if the condors come to us today and say, please, please, we'll pay you to protect our turf, then I'm happy to protect their turf for them. But we don't have that kind of agreement. The other issue with that is if we let them embed into the city they now have the advantage of being able to embed themselves. Guerrilla warfare, whatever else. And they have better equipment than we do. They could when probably... It, when it comes to street-to-street -street fighting, I would think that our gangs are going to have the, uh, the advantage over a bunch of city folk. Do you know Tidehome? Nope. Hey, Anthony, have you, do you hang out in Tidehome very often? Uh, I think Anthony's probably just staring at the model. Um, <laughs> and presumably Doc has, like, small ships, mm -hmm. like, representative of the, the corporate forces moving in or whatever. Uh, and I think you, you kind of, like, say his name, and he doesn't answer your question at all. Um, he just kind of looks down, and, like, keeps staring at the, the model, and he's like, what did they want again? Oh, the the corp? They're they're here to steal some sort of kelp data or something. But they yeah, abandoned research labs somewhere somewhere in Tidehill. Yeah, I think Anthony just stares at it for a while and he's like if this is what they want and he points to Tidehome and then Soggy Bottoms over here, he kind of like moves his finger and he's like how far can those ships shoot? I don't know if they could shoot from Tide Home all the way to Soggy Bottom, but they can certainly sail there. We're a, a coastal town after the, the rising sea levels. So, if they get what they're after, the next step for them is to eliminate any threats to them. Definitely. Why would they leave Soggy Bottom there at all? I mean, why wouldn't they attack us first? No, why would they move in to take over Soggy Bottom instead of just wiping it off the map? Oh, oh, uh, so you're saying after they're done with Tide Home, will they invade Soggy Bottom on land? Or at all. Was... They yeah, might I, just I, artillery I it too. Right, that's why we've got to control the ships. That's why stealing the ships is our main objective here. Maybe a slight addition to the plan. We know exact do we, we know exactly where they want to go to, right? Yeah. Let's let them go there. And then blow it up. I mean, it would be one way of handling the situation. It would certainly help. But if they're aiming to control the whole town, I doubt we'll catch all their forces in one blast, but wouldn't hurt. Uh, it does mean entering the town beforehand, and we're not on the best terms with the gang that's in there now. But if you want to uh, negotiate that... Uh, Tidehome's not guess. like a whole town, right? Tidehome's like a... It's more like an, a, a, a complex. Like, I don't know the scale yeah. of this thing. Oh, I thought it was a town. It is, it's functionally a town. It like was once a complex, a series of factories and buildings and research labs and that kind of thing that has basically become a, a town since then so, okay on the, on the scale of like a town and considering that it's been under uh like protection of the condors for a while and the condors are uh equal to your tier um it's built up pretty well so 
we bring them into the town, we let them go where they want to go, we might even help push a little bit. And then... Yeah, so, if you yeah. can arrange it. I can arrange it. And and right. he'll, he'll be flipping the badge between his fingers and all that as he talks. Okay. So let's cut ahead, I think, to um, what kind of defenses and preparations you want to do. Because... Uh, uh, um, why did I forget your name? Anthony, uh, you were thinking of swinging a hammer or two. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how much defense. I I feel like it's almost negligible. Like what we could do, you know what I mean? Like the the corporation is effectively a hurricane. You know what I mean? This is like <laughs> natural disaster level. Like we can mm -hmm. put up sandbags to mitigate flooding, but I don't know if there's much we can do to really stop it. I think Anthony would probably focus on whatever it takes to make sure that there is secure enough locations for people to be safe. Yeah, that's kind of what I was picturing. Like shelters. Shelters, yeah. uh, bunkers, that kind of thing. Also, uh, hand-waving to some extent what the defenses are so that when they come up in the action... Yeah, say, no, that's fine. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. I'm just imagining we can't literally defend against the corporations. You know what I mean? Like... Well, they, they are interested in, in uh, conquering territory, so um, some anti-boat defenses, uh, naval mines, and stuff like that would uh, delay them. There's also that uh, huge unfinished bridge mm -hmm. um, so setting up, like, turrets and that kind of things on top of that. I forget that. Sure. Yeah, land-based artillery to mm -hmm. counter battery. Um. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I feel like we probably don't have like large machine gun kind of things, but uh, yet we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If somebody acquires those, I'll install them. But yeah, I think I think trying to establish safe places uh, for townsfolk is yeah. pretty much the okay. biggest thing. Um. So is is rig appropriate for that or? Yeah, if you're trying to, like, build a safe place for them, then yeah. Yeah, just reinforcing trying... buildings or, like... Sure. Making sure that there's a number of structures that, like, people can retreat to or be in before it all goes down or whatever. Um, yeah, I think Rig would probably be good for that. Okay. Uh, and my cool bonuses do not apply to... No, not to buildings. Buildings. You do get bonus results from, as long as they're wooden buildings, uh, from the lumberyard. This shelter sure. is also a motorcycle. <laughs> um, no, I was just declaring that more than anything. It wasn't really a question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, rig, uh, get a five. It's right. two takes. So, that's a uh, three plus one result plus level. One result level. So mm. yeah, so yes. you are able to uh, build up enough defenses. Um, and we'll say what those are during the ride, um, bunkers and that kind of thing. Uh, now's a good time for us to take our break, and then when we come back, we'll jump into the ride, and any other downtime and preparation kind of things you want to do, we can flash back to. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Sounds right, good. Awesome. Uh, see you, everybody. Minutes.